Hi everybody, it's Chris Swataka, your wacky fun friend. This is Chris Swataka with Live at Five coming to you live on our Facebook page for the Labor Day uh, Singles Retreat. How is everybody doing tonight? Whether you're watching live or whether you're watching on a, uh, a replay uh, day, night, we just are so thankful that you are wanting to watch uh, Live at Five. Again, my name is Chris Swataco. I am uh, a leader of different ministries, uh, LaborDaySingles.org. I co-direct that with Pastor Freddie Johnson, um, Chris Swataco Ministries, the Singles Network Ministries, and Intentional Relationship Solutions. Um, so let me tell you what I did yesterday. Now, I don't have... Uh, any particular uh, fiasco that happened or crazy thing that happened, but I went zip lining at a place called the Gorge. And it is a, a zip line course, rappelling, um, a swinging bridge, uh, 11 zip lines in the North Carolina mountains, about 20 minutes from my home in Saluda. And uh, those of you who are coming to our Labor Day retreat, I would put that on your list to, to go. Um, if you want to have something that's adventure, um, a little scary, but lots of fun. And, uh, of course, the only part I don't ever like, and this is the way it is with every zip line that I've ever done, is when you have to end, you go from one zip to the next one, and the impact of ending sometimes isn't much fun. So if you got back issues, neck issues, I wouldn't go on it. But boy, was it fun with my friends. We laughed so hard. Um, it's crazy. I've been on four zip lines around the world and this was, you know, another great experience with my friends. Hi everybody. Good to have you guys check in and, uh, and pictures are coming. Pictures are coming. But I say that to say that, you know, life is short and you want to live it fully. You don't want to live in any regrets. And so I had shared with my mom that I was going on the zip lining and she's like, why are you going? And I said, well, cause it's scary. And she's like, why would you want to go on something scary? And I go, because it's not scary like, you know, like you're just going to end up being traumatized. But it's scary in that there's a risk involved. There's heights involved. There's the unknown involved. And, and, there, and there is some risk, obviously, of getting hurt. But the risk is minimal because they do everything they can to ensure your safety. But don't we, you know, often we settle for safety. We settle for where it's easy. We settle for where, you know, there's no risk involved. And then you, you miss out a lot of times in life. So if you're coming to the Labor Day Retreat uh, or you live in the North Carolina mountains or close by, put it on your list to do uh, because it was definitely something that will give you some incredible memories and some crazy fun photographs as well. So I want to ask you a question. Um, that maybe you guys can all relate to. Um, have Has someone ever said something to you that hurt you? That's kind of a dumb question, right? Of course they have, right? Maybe they didn't mean it. Maybe it just happened. Maybe it wasn't so much what they said, but it was how they said it. Um, recently, this happened to me a few times. Now, the first one was somebody said something to me inappropriately. Um, and while I laughed it off and, you know, uh, 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 you know, whatever, it really hurt me. Um, I started to become very self-conscious. Um, I started, it started to affect my behavior around him and around other people. Uh, for the point that I found myself uh, feeling like I needed to be defensive. Um, and, and then after a few minutes, the person said, you know, they realized that what they said and how it was pretty bad. And then they started to feel horrible. Um, they spent the next 30 minutes apologizing to me. They decided that, you know what, they'll come up with some uh, something else that was less negative. Um, but unfortunately, the damage had been done. But haven't we all said something that we wish we could take back? I'm on a Macintosh computer and we have the undo button, which is Apple Z. And I always, you know, I'll be in the middle of something and I've said something I shouldn't have said. And in my head, I'll go Apple Z, which I wish that means I could undo it. But you can't, can you? It's out there. It's out there. And that you don't know where it might go. Then I had another person that uh, made an off-put uh, comment about how much she said I like to talk. Which is true. I do like to talk. And, and, and while she seemed like she was attacking me, 
and, and why I'm not sure. Um, later I realized that she was actually jealous because she, she never talks at all. So to come back to her own insecurities, she attacked me. But why would she need to do this? God made us all so different. And he uses us in different ways. He uses quiet people in certain ways. He uses loud people, talkative, people who don't talk. But don't we all attack others in various ways? We talk about them behind their back. We tear them down because we begin to feel insecure in some way. I had yet another person email me to say that she had had a bad experience at a retreat that she had gone to last year out west. And that she knew that I was going to go to the retreat out west. And she wanted to let me know that about her experience. She wanted to give me the heads up. Well, I'll be honest with you. What bothered me about her comment was, you know, I wanted to know what happened. I'm a part of the Labor Day Singles Retreat. And we do our best, best effort to, for people to feel comfortable, for people to feel safe, um, for people to feel love. And uh, we don't want anyone to have a bad experience, although we can't control all the people that are there, you know. But immediately, I wanted to know what had happened. Because one, I wanted to, I wanted to contact the leader and say, hey, this was said to me, and maybe you need to know. But also, even on behalf of all those of you that lead ministries and lead retreats and conferences and organizations and restaurants, etc., you want to know what happen so that maybe you can fix it if you need to fix it. And so I decided to contact the leader and about the event and I found out that this person, no matter what you do, no matter what you do for them, they are a complainer. They complain about everything. But then I thought, can't we all do that? Don't we all complain at times? Don't we all can be a pain in the you know what to people, right? You know, Often we're so unhappy, we're unhappy with where God has us, we're unhappy with the choices in our life, we're unhappy that God hasn't brought us somebody, God hasn't given me this job, God hasn't helped me lose weight, God hasn't, God hasn't, God hasn't. <sighs> then yet I had another situation where I was attacked last Sunday, even on live Facebook, I was attacked on live Facebook maliciously by someone anonymously and I can't even describe to you the hurt the hurt went beyond words um, I kept going over in my mind what did I say that could have bothered anyone um, it literally kept me up all night I, I kept going back and forth in my head I listened uh, to my teaching and I said there's nothing wrong I didn't say anything that was should have offended anybody unless it's called conviction of sin, you know. But then God reminded me, the enemy hates the truth. And the closer, closer I draw to God, the closer you draw to God, the more you speak God's truth, the more I speak God's truth, the more chances you're going to be attacked. But it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to be attacked. I try and teach love. I try to teach hope. and But if someone is against God, if they're against his teaching, they're against Jesus. And unfortunately, you might get caught in the crossfire. But knowing that, knowing that when they attack, when they say something or they, you know, uh, are upset with you or they send you an email or a text or, you know, whatever it is. If you are speaking God's truth and you're speaking it in a way that's loving and your goal is to help people, but they still take it a different way or then that's on them. It's not on you. Any attack for any reason hurts, especially when you've done nothing wrong, especially when you're trying to do what you believe God wants you to do and God wants you to say, and God wants you to write, you know, Especially when you're trying to help get people free from addictions, uh, to have healthy relationships, intentional healthy relationships, to be healed and to be restored and to get saved, to one day be in heaven with Jesus. I want everyone watching this. If you don't know the Lord is your Savior, I want you to know the Lord is your Savior. I want you to be in heaven with me and others one day. 
And all you have to do is accept Christ to know that you're a sinner, that you need a Savior to save you, that you need forgiveness for your sins and admitting those sins and asking Jesus into your heart that you want to follow Jesus. That's how simple. That's the message that I want to get out there, the message that there's hope, the message that God can heal and restore you and your family and your friendships, that God has, has got a plan for your life. But when you're attacked, most folks go into survival mode, right? You go into survival mode and the first thing you want to do is fight back. Just check out road rage. Just check out people who get cut off in traffic. Check out the videos of people who get so angry that they cause a wreck, that they pull guns on people. Think about the things that you've seen on videos of what people do because you're so angry about what somebody else has done or somebody else that you've said something. I remember um, uh, Judge Judy said, the first mistake you make in road rage is you get out of your car. I agree. I agree. But now other people, they may just like, well, Chris, I don't, I don't want to fight. I just want to run. Are you a runner or do you fight back? Put that in the chat. Are you a runner or do you fight back? I will be honest with you. I sometimes will verbally fight back, but most of the time I run. Um, I don't like conflict. I don't know that many people who do, but in my flesh, when I'm first attacked, I want to defend myself. I want to, I want to find out what is going on. Why did, you know, if I said something wrong, I need to know. If I said something wrong, am I the bad guy? If I did something wrong, then I want to know what it is. And if you don't tell me, I don't read minds, okay? But sometimes I want to defend myself and it's just them. And it can make things worse. So are you a runner or do you fight back? Our words, what we say, what we write, email, post on social media, have power. Our words can build or they can break our relationships. James 3, 9 says, with it, talking about our mouth, with it, uh, we can, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. Wow. We build and we tear down. You've been a part of it. You've been on both sides of this. You know the things that you've said, the things you've thought, the things you've emailed and written that has hurt somebody, and you know how it feels to also be hurt. Then why do we keep doing it when we know how horrible it is? Why do we keep doing when we know about the power that's behind the things that we say? Our words can affect and change lives, not only in our work, uh, in our ministries, uh, in our neighborhoods, in our families, our friendships, but also um, they affect them in such a way they can be very positive or they can affect them in a negative way. They can also actually bring healing if they're done the right way. Proverbs twelve eighteen says, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. When we're reckless, when we're not paying attention to what we're saying, when we're not aware of the audience that we're saying it to, when you're not uh, maybe close enough to the people around you to know what you're saying could be a good thing or a bad thing, when you're not thinking about what you're saying uh, in front of other people in your church or your work or your, your family, it's like a sword just stabbing you. I don't know anybody who's been stabbed with a sword that said, oh, that was fun, do it again. That's the words that are used in Proverbs by Solomon, right? He's saying, I'll tell you what, reckless words hurt beyond measure. But when you speak with wisdom, it actually can heal. Your words have the power to heal someone emotionally, spiritually, physically, psychologically, mentally. Wow. God says, don't say anything unless it's going to build people up in Christ. If it's negative or crude, off-colored gossip, don't say it. Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So it's saying not only say stuff, to build them up, but not stuff that's flattery. 
You're not saying it to win their favor. You're not saying it to look good. You're saying it because you know that person needs to be affirmed of positive behavior. That person there is having a tough day and they just maybe need a hug and, you know, let them know that God's got them. And that person needs a prayer of healing over their life. It is saying, God is saying, not just say stuff, but to say it specifically for the audience that you're in front of, that what's going to benefit them. Because sometimes when you're having a tough day and somebody comes along and goes, God's got this. <laughs> God's got you. You just want to punch them, right? Because that's not what you need to hear. Or, you know, God uses all things for his purpose. God will get you through it. God's got a plan in this. Sometimes that's not the word you need. It's true. But sometimes that's not the word you need. Sometimes... Somebody just needs you to come sit beside them and say nothing. God says that we need to say things with grace and, and with content that adds value like salt to our food. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So he's saying, you know, Think about being graceful and gracious and having grace, which is not loud and not abrupt and not, you know, aggressive and not opinionated. And, oh, wait a minute, I think I've, I've had some problems with some of that. Uh, right? Gracious. That's somebody that's genuine, that somebody is calm and collected and is thinking about what they're going to say, right? And so it says seasoned with salt. The reason we season with salt is to make it better right you want to make it better so that you know how to answer each person God says that what we say needs to be acceptable to him Psalm 1914 says let the words of your mouth of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight O Lord my rock and my Redeemer God says what we say Wow the words of my mouth does he approve of them? Is what I'm about to say, would he agree with? What would Jesus think? What would Jesus say? If you're about to, to spread gossip, you're about to cut somebody down, or you're about to hurt them, talk behind your back, would God want you to do that? Hmm. God says that we need to guard our mouths. It keeps us out of trouble. Proverbs 21, 23, those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Yeah. You ever notice like when people are in a jury and there's on the witness stand, sometimes they don't ever let the person that's being charged with the crime get on the stand because he may say something to make himself incriminate him even more. That often less is more. Oftentimes we talk too much and we end up creating more problems and more issues than we just need to not talk at all. There's a balance between talking too much and not talking enough, especially in situations where we feel attacked. And so I love this. He's saying, guard your mouth. He didn't say shut it. He said guard. That means you, you're you careful. You you protect. You know, guarding something is protecting what's coming out. You're like, well, hold on a second. Let me think about this a second, right? It's like having bad breath. Hold on a second, you know, right? He says it keeps them out of calamity. Wow. Guarding our mouths is waiting. It's waiting to say the thing we need to say with some thought and being prepared to make sure that what it is God would want us to say and it's going to be of value. It's going to help the other person. God also tells us that we need to listen more and talk less. I think this scripture in James has got my picture on it. James 1.19 says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear. Two ears, one mouth. Quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Wow. Because he knows most of us respond too quickly. Often saying things we shouldn't and with not a lot of thought. So he's saying to us, listen, let me just tell you, you just need to chill out a little bit. Just slow down a little bit. Because when you react and you get crazy and you get upset because you've been attacked verbally or in written by an email or, or any other way, then you immediately respond back in such a way that you're not even thinking. And then it can make a mess. I hear you, God. So what do we do when we're attacked? 
specifically with words, whether it's verbally, whether it's something you found out that somebody said about you, whether it's in an email or a text, what do you say? Or maybe in a, you know, somebody did a, um, you know, like a review on you or your business, what do you say? Well, first of all, stop and breathe. Just breathe. I like to do the five finger prayer. You breathe up, then down, up, down, up, <laughs> and calm yourself down. Um, I've done it under my breath. I've literally stood there and people didn't even know I was doing it. I was just counting. I had my hand down. It's counting because the first thing I want to do is say something back. But then I don't always want to say the second thing. I just want to run. Number two, don't react. Stay intact. I should put that on a t-shirt, shouldn't I? Don't say anything or write anything. Wait a minute. Think about what you're about to write, what you're about to say. Is it really going to get the response that you need? By saying back to somebody something immediately without thinking it through could have the opposite response that you're wanting. If you're about to write an email to somebody because you feel like what they've done is wrong or maybe you're writing a review about a product. Um, I know the Gorge uh, just said to us, uh, hey, you know, we give, it us, give us a review and if it's not five star, stars, don't post it, contact us. And, uh, you know, I don't know about that. I think that people have a right to know if, some, if a product is good or a product is bad, especially if you're going to go and use that product. But what they're saying is, hey, we need a chance to be able to fix if there's a problem. And if you're unhappy, give us a chance to fix it or give us a chance to defend it. Because what may not be your cup of tea may be somebody else's cup of tea. And so your comment can actually create a problem for that business, that person, when it's just really your opinion and it's not something that's factual. So you have to be careful. Um, uh, number three, peel away the layers. What is the goal behind the attack? Was it really to hurt you, your business, your ministry, your family, your friends? Was it a mistake, an accident? I, I have all those, I say things I shouldn't have said, I, I'm right there. Um, was it out of anger? Uh, something that the person is going through, some type of fear or stress or frustration. Um, maybe they're having a bad day and you kind of have to keep that in context that they're going through something really tough right now and they didn't mean what they said, even if it hurt horribly, knowing that you've probably done the same thing, right? Was it in hopes that their life would change and that's why they said what they said to you? Or was it in hope that your life would change by what they're telling you? Was it to accomplish a certain goal? What was it accomplish a certain goal? And number four, pray. Asking God, what should I do? Should I respond back now? Should I respond later? Or maybe never and just let it go? In our study, Intentional Relationship Solutions, uh, we have a chapter on conflict, how to handle it correctly, how to handle it like Christ. Because often in our relationships, way before you get into a romantic relationship, often we're not good at conflict and with our work. Sometimes we're, you know, people can't keep a job because they constantly have conflict or they can't seem to have a good neighbor or they constantly have arguments in their family and they're not good at resolving conflict. And then they can't resolve it in their friendships or people they go to church with. And then how do you get to a romantic level when you're not really good at doing it in a friendship level? So we have a chapter in our book, our Bible study, Pastor Dan Hauck and myself, that addresses how to handle conflict because we want the most, the best uh, response possible and how you deal with somebody who says something that you don't like or writes about you or has a problem with something in your character because the goal is always to be like Christ. The goal is to always build a relationship. The goal is to always uh, draw people to Christ, not push them away. Matthew 18, 15 through 16 says, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. And, I'm, and before I go to the next verse, and I wanted to say with that, and we talk about them in the, in the study, is that you need to maybe not say it right then. Maybe you need to pick a time and a place where, you know, not a busy restaurant where it's loud, but just say, hey, 
can, can we have uh, maybe a cup of coffee? Can we meet and have a, you know, maybe I can come over to your home or maybe we can talk on the phone. And in a calm way, say to them, listen, um, something you said to me really hurt me. And I don't think you meant to hurt me, but I needed to let you know that it did because I wanted to hear maybe why. Because if what you said was something that maybe I need to fix, then I want to know. But if you said it to really hurt me, why? Because we need to be holding each other accountable. We need to be making changes in our lives. And we talk about that in that study, the importance of having intentional, healthy relationships. The verse goes on to say, if they listen to you, you've won them over. Yay! It says that they listen. It doesn't mean they're going to necessarily agree or whatever, but they've listened. They're like, okay, you know, okay, I hear you. I hear you. What I did was wrong. What I said is wrong. And, you know, but if, they're, if they won't listen, verse 16 says, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Then it goes on to tell you if that doesn't work, you go to the next level, the next level. And the point of this is, you know, if it's something that they said about you or said to you and it's really a concern, then you need to resolve it. But in some cases, you go, you know, they're just having a bad day, or that's my buddy, they don't mean that, and you do let it go. But if it really does concern you, you need to go to them. If they don't agree with you, and it still bothers you, then take somebody else with you. Um, because they need to be held accountable, and they need to understand. But in some cases, some people just choose, you know what, they didn't listen, I'm just going to let it go and not worry about it. Um, but I'm proud of you if you made that step. So what did I do with the people that I had to deal with? Well, the first guy, I forgave him because I've been in the same place. And while it still hurt what he said to me, it gave me comfort to know I'm not the only one that says things I shouldn't say and things out of, you know, at the wrong time and that I've not, I've hurt people too. And I can be stupid uh, or behave stupidly and it was okay. I forgave him and we let it go, right? The next one, the lady that, you know, that uh, said, I talked too much, which is true, but she said it in a way that was kind of hurtful. I forgave her as well. In fact, I prayed for her because her tact was mixed with truth. And while I do talk a lot, her intention was to hurt me so she would feel better. The third one, the one that had the bad experience at the retreat that she went to, well, I, the leader, I went to notify the leader and um, just in case there was some truth, so it could be dealt with and ended, but also to find out truth myself. So if you hear about something and it bothers you, concerns you, don't spread gossip. Don't spread, well, I heard that restaurant, or I heard that, or I heard... Find out for yourself. Find out the truth for yourself so you don't become a part of spreading a lie. And then the last one, it's an honor to be attacked when you're speaking the truth for Jesus. It still hurts. While it's scary where our world is coming to, Christian voices being shut, God is still on the throne. He is still bigger. This voice is telling you right now, only God can shut it. And while there are times I need to listen more, this is the time that if you are a believer in the Lord, if you are a Christian, you need to be speaking more doing more, living more for Christ. And you take a risk of being attacked for the truth. But you know something my pastor reminded me this morning in the sermon. Make sure when you speak that truth, you speak it in love. You speak it in affirming. You speak in hope. You speak in a way that would draw someone to Christ and not repel them away from Christ. And you do it because God told you to do it, not because it's your flesh and what you're hoping to gain, but what Christ in heaven is hoping to gain. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this another Live at Five. Thank you for the, another opportunity to be able to share your truth and encourage someone out there that's struggling, someone out there that's been hurt by somebody's comments or gossip or a, an email or a bad review or just discouraged, Lord, that they just feel discouraged. Lord, I pray you would encourage them. I pray that you would let them know how much you love them. And I pray they would go back to that person if they can and talk to them 
But Lord, if they can't, that they would just release it, they would let it go, they would give it to you. And I pray for those of us that struggle with being the attacker, saying things to people we shouldn't, responding in haste, Lord. I pray that we would learn to breathe, to slow down, and be careful of the words that we choose because those words bring life or they can bring death. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, we want you to come to the Labor Day Retreat, LaborDaySingles.org. It'll be here before you know it. Last year, we had over 300 that registered. They come from all over the country. But you can't experience it if you don't register. Also, I have a Christmas singles cruise coming up in December. We are also making the final details for our Alaskan cruise in June of 2024. Um, also, if you would like to, to learn more about uh, intentional relationship solutions, more about Christmas Taco Ministries, I put it all in the beginning uh, of this, uh, this Live at Five. And please, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear how we can pray for you. And uh, if you've accepted Christ, we'd love to know that as well. So take care, everybody. Uh, till the next time, God bless.